Hello friends, this is Amy. Let's get crafting. I'm using a Dollar Tree, uh, it looks like it's a, a mason jar and it was for the 4th of July and so I removed the stars off of there and I sanded it. And I'm painting both sides with um, chalk paint and I am trying out new chalk paint Rust-Oleum uh, linen white and it went on nice and smooth and I did like how it covered. I believe I did two coats each side and allow it to dry in between and it doesn't take too long to dry. I used my Cricut machine and I cut out this Farm Fresh Eggs and it's um, I bought off of Etsy. It's a SVG and I really like it. And so here I've just weeded it all, which means taking out the other parts you don't need. And then I'm just putting on the transfer tape and I'm um, trying to line up the lines um, of the transfer tape so then it's easier for me to line it up on the little mason jar when I'm ready to put it down. When you've got it where you want it, um, you can use a craft stick or, you know, whatever credit card something to put pressure on the vinyl and then it will adhere to the transfer tape. Then you peel off the transfer tape and your your image will be on the transfer tape. And if there's any areas that don't come off, you can just reapply pressure and it will come up easily. Now my paint is dry on my wood and I'm going to place that on and I ended up doing that off screen where I use the, there's a ruler, you'll see there I ended up measuring with the ruler and I suggest you do that. This was a little difficult because it wasn't just a square but um, I think I got it pretty centered and I did find the center and I used the center of the image to make sure it was in the right spot. And again, apply pressure and then pull off your transfer tape and you'll have it on to your wood. This is one of the projects that I've wanted to do for a while and I it got halfway done and I which was cutting that out and then I never finished it. Here I'm just taking a Sharpie marker and I'm just making some little decorative um, little lines along the edges. And then I'm going to take my ruler as a guide and put in the marks where you would screw on a lid. And I'm not doing it perfectly. And just going along there. And I did end up going over this entire thing with all the lines with um, a paintbrush and uh, some black paint because I wanted it more crisp and dark like the images and it just wasn't you know just with this it wasn't enough for me and I think the pen was a little dried out too so after I finished all this I did go along with my paintbrush and add dark and here I am with the paintbrush and just, I use the Waverly chalk paint again. I use the ink color and just take your time. And it was enjoyable. Person can watch a little TV and listen to some music or whatever you enjoy doing while you're doing this. And it, it's really fun. This project already had a little jute string and I just took it off and I, when I got done with everything dried, I just put some beads on there and I just put it back on the same way that it was hanging on be with before. And then I got my ribbon out because we weren't quite done yet. And this first one shows that I'm tying the ribbon on the side, but in the end, I end up bringing the bow in the middle of the jar because I didn't like how the ends would hang over onto the the words and you couldn't see them.
So here it is moved over in the middle. And then to make sure that, that the bow ends did not go down on the words, I trimmed it and I did put some glue, hot glue behind it so it could dry and be in the right spot. And here I'm doing the dovetails. And I do this, you know, probably 25% of the time, I'll do it backwards. And so then it's flip, do it again, and then you've got, got it cut a little shorter than you intended, but it worked out fine. So here is my mason jar. I just love it. Um, I want to keep this, but I think I'm going to sell it. I'm going to have a little show in my home closer to Christmas time or in between holidays. And so I'm going to sell this. I think it'll sell. And I just love how it turned out. Super cute. This is part of a collaboration hosted by Nicole Northgarden. It's the Get It Done Challenge. And crafters always have a project that we either didn't get finished or didn't get started. And so this is where we should do, you know, get those done. And I'd like you to check out Nicole's channel. She's got two channels. One is called All Things Thrift, Thrift and Home and Garden. So check out her channel. She's got great ideas and those you'll find the link to the playlist in those as well. DIY number two. So another project that I never got done was I was going to make a pillow for my daughter um, and she is she loves yellow and yellow gingham you can't get any better than that. So this is the directions I had. I had a pillow form of 16 inches by 16 inches and it this the directions for these it was a snug fit so you cut it 16 by 36 and then I'm going to hem a quarter inch on each side where you know it's a 16 inch side and then you're just basically going to fold it so there's a three and a half inch overlap and sew it together with that hem of course you'd be inside out and then invert it so it's super easy to do this so I'm just showing you I'm making the hem and believe it or not um, I ironed this before but it fell on the floor and got uh, wrinkly again. I also highly suggest that you wash your fabric prior to uh, making anything like a pillowcase, anything like that. Wash it, dry it, iron it, and it wasn't terribly wrinkly, so I thought I'm just going to go for it and I um, will definitely iron it before I pop it in the, the pillow form in. So I did do that as well. So just going along with that quarter inch uh, seam. And I want to thank you for stopping in today. I appreciate you checking out my channel. I enjoy making crafts. I'm having so much fun with this YouTube channel. I really enjoy it and I hope that you are too. My machine is both a sewing machine and an embroidery machine, and I do have an embroidery video if you ever want to just uh, check out how it works. And it makes beautiful, I make beautiful towels with it. Okay, and so here's my seams, and I'm just going through this again to show you now that I've done those quarter inch seams on the ends. And those dotted lines in the middle is where I'm going to fold things together and overlap. And then you're going to sew the other end. And of course, you're going to want the wrong sides together. And then when you finish sewing, you can trim the edge and snip the corners if you wish. So right now I'm insiding it out. I've got all that sewed together and then I took it over and I ironed it out so it's nice and crisp and lo and behold I dropped the iron on the floor. I tripped on the cord and I quickly picked it up but I had already done a little damage to our area rug. So I guess I'm going to have to get down there with the scissors and trim off the melted plastic. <laughs> ay ay ay. 
Now these are really easy. You can just take them off just as easy as you put them on if you need to wash them. This is somewhat thin material, but you know, it's super cute. All right, so I'm just opening the package and again, I ironed that uh, pillow cover before and I popped this on and it was, it turned out great. It's a great pattern. I was impressed on how nice and snug it fit and perfect. It just, uh, the only thing I wasn't able to do with this pillow form was to put a little karate chop in the middle. You know how they do that on the top and then they put it in their, on their couch. This pillow form would, it's just too stiff for that. But I guess if you would stuff it yourself maybe and make it a little less loop, you know, not as tight. But I don't think my daughter Paige cares about that. So she's just gonna love this. Turned out great, and thank you again for stopping in. I appreciate it, and you have a wonderful week, and check out the playlist. I'll link everything in the description box, and you take care. Bye-bye.